God's awesome creation. This time around, let's look at the ants. You know, ants, as you when you look at them, and they're referred to in a couple places in the Bible too, but when you look at them, they are so, so diversified and so fascinating, almost having a seeming culture um, and organization of uh, society in some of the different types. I've been fascinated by ants since I was a little kid. I remember um, the uh, boy across the road, lived across the road from me, Marty May, used to take a magnifying glass outside and he would hold it over the ants and burn them. I, on the other hand, observed them because they were quite fascinating to observe. If you take a good look at an ant, it is made like three tiny bugs that are fastened together in a row on a piece of a pipe. The one in front is the head. The middle one is the chest, or thorax, and the one in the rear end, the abdomen, and it's the biggest of them all. If the ant is broken apart, each segment can go on living for a little while. Each has its own blood supply, its own breathing tubes, its own openings into the outer air closed by its own valves, and separate nerves to operate the muscles of each part. After the head is cut off, its jaws go on biting and its feelers go on feeling. The middle part, with six legs, can go on running and kicking. The rear part can continue to do what it was doing, whether laying eggs, stabbing with a stinger, or performing as a bottle of honey. <clears throat> yes, honey. We'll get into that a little more later. Ants get into terrible fights because they have this uh, type of body. If an ant is beheaded or its rear is torn off, the other two parts keep on fighting ferociously. And again, this... <laughs> I, I can't I can't fathom anybody believing the lie of evolution anymore. Um, it's pretty much been proven a lie, um, and yet there are those who want to be deceived, and they want to be deceived simply because they don't want a moral authority over them and uh, admit that they're something greater than man. And they are indeed deceiving themselves. God created everything. Make no mistake about it. And his mark of creation can particularly be seen in nature, but particularly can be seen in the ants. So let's continue taking a look at them. Ants have the largest population of any dry land creature in the whole world, as they can fit themselves into any situation. They don't have to live in a certain kind of place, like a honeybee. Uh, any soil anywhere in the world makes a home. A bit of rotten wood <clears throat> and a fallen log will do, or cracks in your house or barn. Ants are not particular. Bees eat only pollen and nectar, so that if there are no flowers around, there are no bees. But ants will eat many different foods, found in large quantities everywhere. Their chief food is dead insects, and of these there is an endless supply. One man watched a large family of ants all morning patiently, counting the dead insects that he saw lugged and pushed into the nest. The number averaged 28 per minute, or 13,500 bodies of all sizes in one eight-hour working day for the dinner table of that one family. But make no mistake about it, it's a large family. Um, but um, <clears throat> if dead insects are out of season, ants will readily turn to other varieties of foods. An apple or any fruit that's been bruised by falling to the ground makes a luscious dish. Ants like food to be soft and squishy. They will not chew through the stretched, polished skin of an apple. They love seeds of grasses and, and berries. They wait for decay to cook them because seeds have, a, have tough coats. Some ants actually plant seeds, and when they start to sprout, they bite off the top uh, or the root tip to keep them from growing, and they have a, a garden of fresh vegetables available in an endless supply. I'm not sure that I have ever read of any other insect that uh, that purposely farms food other than Homo sapien. Ants pass up fresh pollen, which is a kind of crystal and hard. They cannot make pollen mush like bees do, but they like honey. They lick sweet juices off from leaves and sap coming out of their wound in a stem of a, uh, of a tree and sweet syrup off other insects. They take nectar from flowers if they can, but flowers seem to know this, for God um, put up an obstacle to ants crawling into the flowers. These flowers keep their nectar only for bees. 
They erect bristles that stop crawling ants like a barbed wire entanglement. Some flowers defend nectar um, with gummy places, uh, for no little insect can walk if its uh, feet are stuck down. <laughs> Others dangle flowers from, um, from shaking slippery stems, which knock off an ant before it can get to the flower. Ants are not bothered when they cannot obtain nectar from flowers because they have so many varieties of food that they can choose from. Suppose we watch an ant take a dead moth home. The fat body is 27 times as big as the ant. And to make matters worse, stiff wings stick out of each side. The route lies through a thicket of grass. The ant cannot follow a path down on the ground because the grass stems would block the outstretched wings. It has to be up high with more open space where the moth can be tipped up or down, turned this way or that. The job of um, the ant is doing can be compared to a man's carrying an airplane through a thick treetop through the trick <laughs> sorry the um, thick treetops of a dense matted jungle. It's difficult to know how long the process will take. As the uh, ant gets closer to home, perhaps others will smell the food and come out to help their companion with the uh, terrible job of pulling the huge moth through the towering jungle and out onto the uh, clear pathway leading to the hill ant hill. It is uh, thickness of muscle, not length, that gives the ant its strength. God built them strong. The strong man has bulging sh uh, muscles, and ant's muscles are thick and short, but more than strength is needed to get uh, the, that moth home. The ant does not try to carry it. It drags, pushes, pulls, up ends the load. It runs from side to side, in front or, and be or behind, working like a demon, never pausing. It has six legs to brace against the grass while it nudges the thing with its head. It can take a stand of, um, with, three, with three legs and use the others to support the load or as levers. It keeps up a rapid fire tapping of the moth's body and the, uh, the grass with its feelers, sizing up the situation every instant. The moth mysteriously keeps moving, bumping and lurching toward the very place where the ant wants it to be. With its long legs spread apart and its body hung low, an ant is built for um, super leverage, strong bracing, powerful dragging, pushing, and pulling. It even uses its uh, elbowed feelers for support. Its six legs, two pullers, two support, uh, supporters, and two pushers make it easy to understand why ants are so strong for moving heavy loads. They may work uh, singly or tackle a major problem together. They can quickly bring pebbles from underground, pebbles which a man, if he were the size of an ant, would use a bulldozer to move. And ants can maneuver the rocks to clear their tunnels and also make circular walls around the home, um, the home's entrance for protection. For ants are the world's greatest tunnelers and diggers, and their underground galleries and rooms are built to last for years, with special chambers built on various levels to be used as apartments and storehouses for ant eggs or surplus supplies of food. Ants protect themselves from enemies better than any other animal on earth. Even a keen-eyed bird has trouble picking up a target that disappears while you look at it. An ant is not helpless even when a beetle, an earthworm, or a snake burrows into its nest. One small snake, called a worm snake, will glide through the ant's tunnels looking for rooms where the ant's babies are hidden. Then, the ants carry their babies through the um, connecting galleries into rooms deeper underground. Others attack the monster without hesitation. Although they are um, pygmies in comparison to the enemy, they put up a terrific fight, kicking, biting, stabbing, slashing, and cutting. Where ants will attack anything that attacks them, regardless of its size. Often ants meet grasshoppers in the grass. The grasshopper has its eardrums down in its forelegs so that it can hear every little sound in the grass. And when the big fellow looms up and stares down at them, the ants are maddened. One may point its rear, uh, its rear end at the grasshopper and use it as a stinger like a, <clears throat> like a fire hose. It squirts a silent, invisible spray of stinging poison as far as 18 inches. Then it is time for the grasshopper to become maddened and to pull the springs of his mighty le hind legs and leap out of sight. Ants, with their tearing jaws and hidden stingers, have many ways of making giants mind their own business and never hesitate to use any of, the, of their fighting equipment. 
the endless series of galleries and rooms in which ants live may house several hundred thousand creatures. Called a colony, it is more like a family because the th um, throng often consists of children of one queen. Ant queens do not murder another queen if she turns up, as do bees, uh, queen bees. So ant nests may have several families living together, but they must all smell the same way because the smell is paid out along their hunting uh, trails. No matter how many trails crisscross, each ant can find its way back to the underground home from which it set out. Ants that are busy digging tunnels, hauling food, and running trails never have wings. But in August, certain ants sprout wings. These are the, the males and queens and going off uh, to lay eggs. On a clear, calm afternoon, these winged ants fly off on a mating trip into the sky. And after this flight, the males drop to the ground. They can't hide um, with their wings. They must hobble around until another insect or a bird finds them and eats them. The queen also drops to the ground, but nature, her god, has attached her wings so that they can be easily torn off. She grabs them with her jaws and uh, front feet, and soon she is helpless and alone, far from the anthill, where she has been carefully tended by nurses and workers. Because she came through the air, there is no older trail to find the way back home. She must dig a hole as fast as she can. She is not a tunnel digger, so it's hard work. Her jaws are are worn down, her hair is scraped off, her smooth armor scratched and bruised. She must dig before a bird spots her. When the hole is deep enough, she pulls a stone or some dirt over her and snuggles down and lies there for um, 87 days in the quiet darkness until all her eggs have been hatched. After that, she has many children to do the, uh, the digging and the real tunneling can start. Ant tunnels are clean, round tubes. <coughs> They are used as subways for the ants to get <clears throat> to rooms where they lay eggs or store food. The idea is to make it easy for the worker ants to carry their eggs and babies when run from one room to another if an enemy turns up. Ants living in uh, a long or ants live a long time compared to other insects. A bee a bee dies in just six short weeks, but ants live for years. The colony can grow hundreds of thousands of ants with a vast system of tunnels, if not disturbed. Four months after the first egg hatch, eggs hatch, a new crowd of stronger tunnelers appear. Their swiftly passing polished bodies smooth the tunnels. These ants um, arch uh, roofs of rooms and flattened floors. T uh, two years later, the large operation needs special guards. These turn up from the eggs that never stop hatching, and soldier ants stand at the uh, entrance. Three years after the lost uh, queen first dropped to the ground, some ants sprout wings, another flight goes off into the, into the sky, and another queen drops to the earth and starts furiously digging away for a new nest. Soon she will have established another flourishing colony of ants just like the ones she left behind, the formula God uses to scatter ant nests all over the world. The giants that invade the ant's tunnel system are not the most dangerous foes. All of the cruel weapons, their fierce strength, and their stabbing and poisoning equipment are chiefly used against well-organized armies of other ants. Great battles take place between ants again and again in summer. Um, let us watch a family of familiar black ants going about their business, running their maze of tunnels, raising hundreds of children, lugging in dead insects, and preparing for the, the great event when the winged ones will fly off to their once-in-a-lifetime flight into the blue sky, so another ant queen can begin a new ant colony. One day, an ugly stranger turns up at the tunnel of these black ants. He knows there are hidden rooms filled with white bundles of, of black ant babies. The stranger is richly colored, brown, red tinged with purple. His jaws protrude far out on each side of his head like enormous um, curving scimitars, made to slash and pierce the armor <coughs> of ants. This is the face of the horrible Amazon ant, and uh, the black ants know it spells trouble for the whole colony, for he will soon return, bringing an army of, of enemies with him. When they know red ants are nearby, the blacks begin to stop uh, their holes with stones and dirt. They scatter pebbles and debris so that they will not have to give away the location of their entrances. 
perhaps 200 feet away over the hill, the red ants are seething with excitement, their scouts searching the countryside singly or in squads of four or five, leave an odor trail back from the front door of the lax hideout to the door of the home nest. This is the trail the red marauders will follow as they begin their march. Now the reds pour out in their tunnels and line up in uh, compact regiments. The column moves straight toward the home of the blacks. Arriving on the scene, the reds break Frank furiously, um, pulling out plugs and tearing covers off from tunnel entrances. They probably find the holes with their sense of smell. When the tunnels are opened, there is a panic underground. The reds invade the galleries and snatch up babies, and the blacks also snatch up their babies and carry them from room to room trying to find a safe place for them. Soon both reds and blacks pour out of the tunnels. Many have jaws full of white bundles. These are babies, poppy, um, that which are sound asleep, and easily, easily mistaken for eggs. The blacks are wildly looking for a place to put their bundles, while the reds form a single column and head straight for home, still holding the white bundles tight in their jaws. The blacks do not let the reds um, keep their single column march. They attack, and a terrible battle is joined. Reds and blacks slash with scimitars, stab with stingers, squirt poison vapor, bite off heads and legs. The two parts left after the head is cut off go on fighting. The field is, is, uh, of battle is littered with pieces of ants and white bundles falling to the ground. The chances are the blacks outnumber the reds and will drive them off pick up the babies, and put them back in the nest. Then they remove the dead bodies and put the anthill back in order again. Another kind of red ant, the red formica, makes war in a mob instead of forming columns. They form a, ra a waving front several feet or yards across and rippling along, searching for black ant nests. They have s um, been seen to go out raiding 44 times during July and August. On six raids, they found no nests, but from 25 expeditions, they brought back a great number of white bundles um, of babies. And the reds bring them up as red ants, and the captured babies will work the same way, and just as hard as they would for their own family. Ants are quick to forget, though, and soon after the battle, life goes on as usual. Paracel ants uh, are... are are truly unique too. People are proud of their vegetable gardens, but when it comes to the most delicious and nourishing vegetable cultivated in any garden, the prize goes to the ant. Not all, not all ants, just a few that have learned to produce a vegetable so rich in protein and sugar that they can give up eating insects and live on the garden crop. No other animal lives on food exactly like the food of these leaf cutter or parasol ants. Since ants are underground dwellers, they pick a special kind of plant that can grow in darkness. Mushrooms thrive where it is dark, damp, and cool. The underground part looks like cotton, and the ants prune it so it never grows the mushroom umbrella that we see above. This marsh, uh, mushroom cotton makes luxurious gardens. The gardens look like bath sponges full of holes where ants run in and out and where fresh air can circulate. Mushrooms, uh, cotton, treated with chemicals from uh, the mouths of ants, causes clear, shiny heads of, of a mysterious vegetable <clears throat> to bubble out. The ants snip off these bubbles and eat them. They lay eggs on the uh, colony threads, and when, the, when they hatch, it is as though they were laying in a bed of cabbages. The babies devour the crop all about them. Since this mushroom cotton grows only on fresh leaves, fertilized in a particular way by the ants, they keep cutting round pieces of leaves and carrying them back to their galleries. The parade of ants holding round green bits of leaves high overhead is a curious sight that gives them this, the name of parasol ants. The ant mushroom garden must be kept clean and pure. Dust must not spoil the delicate flavor of its vegetables. A germ would bring all sorts of weeds, spores, and bacteria <clears throat> into their neat vegetable garden. So while bigger ants are out cutting and carrying leaves, little ants are continually cleaning both the trees um, outside, as well <clears throat> as the underground tunnels where the leaves are hung, covered with their growth of mushroom cotton. Now I want to tell you about the honey cask ants. These ones are, are absolutely, totally amazing. Indians digging in the dry southwest struck what looked like little green grapes, and as they dug deeper, they kept finding more grapes down to about six feet. The grapes were juicy and very, very sweet. 
But how in the world could they grow buried in the ground? The answer tells us one of the strangest secrets of life in the darkness of ant caverns and shows the incredible diversity of life that God created just in the ants alone. The juicy things were not grapes. They were storage bottles for honey. These bottles had the feel, had, had feet that could wiggle, and bodies and heads attached by waving feelers. Primitive man made wine bottles and water jars out of leather, but the bottles the Indians found were live animals. They were ants which had agreed to drink all the honey brought to them until they were round as a, as a ball and to give a drink to other ants. These honey ants live on honey alone, but honeydew is plentiful for a few weeks only. <clears throat> ants get it by stroking the backs of aphids, plant-sucking insects that make syrupy honeydew, uh, or form gall lumps. Gall lumps are nests of insects which suck sap from oak trees and turn it into honeydew. The syrup these uh, insects make oozes out of the gall in droplets during the night. In uh, harvesting the uh, the sweet honeydew off the aphids, not only are these ants uh, um, collectors uh, uh, and storage uh, storage experts on honey, they also have a kind of, um, <clears throat> um, oh, what would you call it, herding or, or uh, herding system, just like, well, not just like, but in a sense as we do with cows, sheep, <clears throat> pigs, and other things, so they do with uh, the aphids. The ant family, which depend on honeydew as its only food, would die of starvation when honey was out of season unless some way were found to store it up. You see, things like this disprove evol evolution because these would have died out in the process of the change. They couldn't have lived without the honeydew and they, they had to evolve into creatures that could store the honeydew. It, it's just absolutely stupid and makes absolutely no sense. Ants cannot build wax reservoirs like bees, um, so some of them become honey bottles. A honey bottle ant is called a replete, meaning filled up. In a big family of honey ants, 300 repletes may be filled with honey syrup. They are ordinary workers and are not born with special equipment for this job. We do not know whether a boss selects them or whether they step up and offer their services. From the time they start becoming repletes, they never go outside their caverns. Other ants locate and collect the stores of delicious honeydew, for the repletes are little more than living storage bottles. An ant starts turning into a honey bottle when young, before the armor of its body hardens. Then its skin can stretch. The honey stomach is in the rear or abdomen. Its head and chest remain the same. But as more ants bring it a drink, its rear swells and swells until it is as round as a grape. It hangs itself up to the roof of the cavern, holding on with claws on its front feet. Dangling there, it can only wave its legs. It is too fat to move. If the honey bottle gets accidentally knocked off, other ants use um, strength and skill to carry it um, up and hook it back to the ceiling again. The others take good care of the honey bottles, who may live hanging patiently from the ceiling for years, supplying their anthill with its favorite food, um, whether honeydew is in or out of season. I'm going to close this, this time on, um, for this time on the uh, ants, God's amazing creation never ceases to astound me. Um, in time, I will do another um, video about ants because there are so many to talk about, and I really only told about a few of the different varieties in this. But I want to thank you for stopping by. Hope you've enjoyed, and God bless.